So today, friends, we're going to talk about a special kind of duck called mallard duck. And you might be wondering, why are these ducks so special? Mallard duck. Before the end of our video, I'm going to tell you something so special about them. And then, on our next video, we're going to do an experiment. So for today, we're going to talk about the nesting of mallard duck. The type of food that these type of duck eat. And where do they live? And where are they? Where can we find them? What part of the world? So I know for the food, they eat seeds and plants. For nesting, they try to find a safe place where they can nest their eggs. And they nest on dry land that's very close to their home. And they also protect their eggs by going close to where there's grassy area and where there's trees hanging over so that the branches and the grass can cover their eggs from predators. I know some of these stocks can be found in North America, in Australia, and Europe. And habitat. What kind of habitat do they live in? They live in wetlands. Wetlands are things such as um, in the city parks, you can find little ponds or lakes. These are the places that you can find mallard ducks. Mallard ducks have a special type of gland that is located by their tail area. It's called a preen gland. And something special happens to the preen gland when the ducks use their beak to activate it. So on our next video, friends, we are conduct our own experiment and we're going to see what happens. Now I'm going to read a book with you. And today we're going to read Duck and Goose, written and illustrated by Tad Hills. Oh my, what is that? Duck quacked. That's a silly question, Goose honked. It is a big egg, of course. Of course it's an egg. I knew that. What I mean is, where did it come from? Goose looked skyward. He looked to the river. He looked to the fields. He thought very hard. Who are you? I, said Duck, puffing out his feathered chest. I'm the one whose egg that is. I saw it first. Goose quickly raised one webbed foot. It's mine. I touched it first. Hey, you should never put your dirty foot on an egg. Don't you know anything about caring for eggs? <laughs> yes, I do, Goose cried out. Stop yelling, Duck yelled, then whispered forcefully. Don't you know that you and your screaming are very likely disturbing the baby bird who is trying to take a snooze inside this egg? Goose wished that Duck wasn't right. He lowered his head and whispered softly. I am very sorry. Go back to sleep. My, that's quite a beauty you have there, called the bluebird from across the river. 
Thank you. It's mine, quacked Duck. Actually, it's mine, honked Goose. Thank you. So, asked Duck, what do we do now? We should do something, suggested Goose. Yes, you are right. Good thinking, agreed Duck. Like what? Duck and Goose each thought, hmm, what can they do to help the baby bird? They're thinking there's a baby bird in here. So, Duck's way of helping this baby bird is saying, this is egg property. Duck's egg, no geese allowed. No honking, $5 fine. And Goose thought, if you are a duck, keep walking. No ducks beyond this point. Quiet, please. Absolutely no quacking in this area. Well, we must keep the egg warm until fuzzy little occupant is ready to come out. Excellent idea. He pushed past Goose. Step aside and I shall just do that. But Goose was quick too. After a flurry of fussing, grunting and groaning, slipping and sliding, honking and quacking, Duck and Goose found themselves back to back. Scoot over, I don't have any room, complained Duck. You are much closer to me than I am to you. Stop yelling in my ear, Goose. Shh, Goose hushed, pointing at the round thing beneath them. Yes, yes, yes. We must remember, quiet, quiet, quiet. We mustn't disturb the little one. And so they sat very still and very quiet, waiting. For a long time they waited. They listened to the crickets chirp and f frogs burp. I'm going to teach this baby bird to quack like a duck. Duck boosted. Well, I'm going to teach it to honk like a goose. I'm going to teach this baby bird to waddle. They heard a pitter-patter of the rain. I'm going to teach this baby bird to swim. Me too, Goose said. To pass the time, they sniffed wildflowers in the warm sun and shared breadcrumbs while Goose thought duck to hunk. They watched the sunset in the sky and duck thought Goose to quack. They counted the stars in the night sky. Let's teach our baby to fly, said Goose. Good idea, said Duck. I'm sure our baby will be a fast learner, said Duck. If it takes after you and me, I'm sure you are right, agreed Goose. Together they waited until... Did you feel that? Duck. Duck nodded. Yes. Did you feel that, Goose? Goose nodded. It's time, Goose. It's time. They're super happy, friends. Let's see. Quickly. Duck slid down and started running in circles around their eggs. What should we do? What should we do? I think we should remain calm. Excuse me, a little voice called out. Oh, sorry friends. Here's the little voice. Duck stopped in all the exciting confusion he had failed to notice the bluebird kicking their egg. Can I play too? She asked.
play? This is no time for play, yelled Duck. This is no time for games, yelled Goose. And what's with the kicking? I was only trying to get your attention, said the little bird. Well, you got it, Duck huffed. False alarm, Goose, go back to work. Can't you see that we are very busy here? Goose explained to the bluebird. This is serious business. This is perhaps the most important moment of our lives. Oh, oh my, I'm sorry, apologized the bluebird. I had no idea. I just thought that maybe I could play with your ball. It really is a nice one. And then she flew away. Goose gulped. Did she say ball? You know, I did have my doubts. Duck finally said, it is a bit squishier than most eggs I have seen. Yes, and I must say, I was somewhat suspicious of those big dots, Goose admitted. It may not be an egg, but it is lovely, said Duck. Oh, absolutely, Duck, Goose agreed. It's a keeper. As the crickets chirped, the fro frogs burped, and the grass swayed in a gentle breeze. Goose quacked and duck honked, and the ball bounced, rolled, and sometimes even flew. The end. Thanks for listening to my story, friends. I will see you on our next video when we talk about the different parts of a mallard duck and conduct our own experiment. See you then. Bye-bye.